Oh, guys, you're going to have a couple, three videos to watch on top of this one. Kinetic energy, you'll find this in there, too. Uh, it's a handout uh, we're going to work from. A uh, couple of your homework questions that you'll have, nine, uh, yeah, nine and ten. I'm going to um, probably give you the answers there because they're, they're math and it's a little complicated. Uh, so we're going to work those in class together while they're doing their homework. So I will give you the answers and you can work it to see if you can come up with those answers. Uh, but mark those the answers that I put down. Uh, that way you, you'll get those correct. Uh, they're not going to be on the test. Um, but just to have an idea of what to do there. Okay, here we go. All right, kinetic energy. All right, what is kinetic energy? Okay, kinetic energy is the energy an object has due to its motion. Okay, remember, kinetic energy is when something is in motion. Okay? okay, so as long as an object is moving at that same velocity, it will maintain the same kinetic energy. Okay, the kinetic energy of an object is calculated, and we talked about this yesterday also, from the velocity and the mass. Okay, that's the two things you got to have. Uh, as you can see from the equation below, the velocity is squared and can have a significant impact on the kinetic energy, okay? Uh, and here's the equation for calculating kinetic energy, okay? So it's simple, kinetic energy equals one-half, and it's not one-half of what, it's one-half times the mass of the object times the velocity squared. Okay, uh, and we're going to walk with those two problems on your homework. When we're going to walk through those together, okay, and kind of kind of help you understand what you're doing. Okay, uh, those will not be on the test. I'm going to tell you that right now. Okay, those two will not be on the test. Uh, okay. It's just one half. Just one half. One half. It, it's of nothing. That's what I just said. You, the, the way you calculate it is you just... It's a number. Like, literally, the number okay. is one half. We're going to work through it, Julia. Trust me. Okay? I want to show you. Okay? How to measure kinetic energy. The standard unit for kinetic energy is the joule. We talked about that yesterday. The joule is the standard unit for energy in general. Uh, you do have other units for energy, which includes the Newton meter... Uh, the kilogram meter squared over second squared. Um, you know, we've got, we've got all kinds of things, but the general uh, way you, you would list it is joules, okay? Now, on your homework, that's what he's going to ask you. That's the answer, okay? Um, the standard unit, for, um, I don't believe we did that. So kinetic energy is a scalar quantity which means it only has a magnitude, it does not have a direction, okay? So it is not a vector. Remember, it's gotta have both of those things to be a vector, okay? That's also gonna show up on your homework. How is it different than potential energy, okay? Kinetic energy is due to an object's motion, while potential energy is due to an object's position or state, okay? When you calculate an object's uh, kinetic energy, its velocity is an important factor. Velocity, however, has nothing to do with the object's potential energy because if it has potential energy, it's not really moving, so it has no velocity, right? Okay? Now, it shows you there in that little picture, the lighter colored ball is supposed to be green and the other one apparently was purple, okay? Uh, the green ball has potential energy due to its height. You notice it, it, they've got it like it's sitting on a shelf, okay? The purple ball, the one on the right, is falling. That's what the lines represent, it's falling. So it has kinetic energy due to its velocity, okay? It's falling, so it has velocity, so therefore, it has kinetic energy. Is kinetic energy only used whenever it's moving? When it's moving. That's what kinetic energy is. Kinetic energy is when something is in motion. Yep, yes, sir. But 
But if you were to throw the ball up, it would only be potential energy for the split second when it stops. Exactly. Exactly. At that point in time, it is, it is as it's going up. In fact, we're going to talk about that right now. Talk about a roller coaster here. That's a great, great point. One way to think about potential and kinetic energy is to think about a roller coaster. Okay, you're sitting in a car on a roller coaster on the track, and as the car travels up the roller coaster, as it starts up the big hill here, it is, it's got kinetic energy, but it's gaining potential energy. Okay, it is gaining potential energy, but it's, it's using kinetic energy because it's in motion. When it gets up to the top, it's getting ready to crest. That's potential energy just for that split second while it's, it tops up there and it almost comes to a stop. Well, actually, it does most time it kind of come to a stop before it falls down off. That has stored up, but that now it's potential energy. Now, once it takes off back down that hill, now it's using kinetic energy again, and it's losing potential energy because it's picking up velocity as it goes down the hill. So as it goes uphill, it's using kinetic energy, but it's gaining potential. Once it gets to the crest, it has potential energy. Once it starts back down again, it's using kinetic energy, and it's losing potential energy at that point in time because it's going downhill. Okay? Uh, think about a pendulum on a plot, okay? It swings back and forth. When does, when does it have potential energy? When it's, uh, when it's right it, where you're when in. When it's at the top. You think it's when it's at the top? Yeah. How about anywhere else? Uh, on the other side. On the other side. That's potential energy because just for that split, a blink of an eye, it comes still. And then it starts again. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, only, it's only a split second. And it, yeah, it's a, yeah, and as it goes up, it's gaining that potential energy. But then as it goes back down. And then down, as it comes down, it's losing potential down, energy. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay? All right. Um, some example problems is a car and a bicycle are traveling at the same speed, which has the most kinetic energy. What do you think? Uh, the car does. Yeah, the car because does. Because it has more mass. Because it's got more mass. It weighs more than, than the uh, uh, bicycle. I mean, we talked about yesterday, yeah. if you got hit, if you were crossing the street and you got hit by a guy on a bicycle going 20 miles an hour, or you got hit by a bus going 20 miles an hour, the bus is going to do a whole lot more damage because it's got a whole lot more mass. Okay? So the idea is look both ways and don't walk out in front of either one of those. Okay? So a ball weighs around one kilogram and it's traveling 20 meters per second. What is the kinetic energy, okay? So what you have to do there, this is where you would take the one half times one. Which is one half. Which would be one half, and then. You times it by 20. By 20, meters. okay. Ooh. So okay. you would have to do each one by 20, so that would be uh, 20 over 40. Yep. There you and go. you, no, it'd be one half. Wait, no, no, no. You would have to do 20 times 20 and then do that. Yep. Times the, uh, there, you, there you go. So it'd be 400. Yeah. Yep. So it'd be, so it'd be 400 over 800. And then so it'd, be, it'd end up being 200 joules. Okay. A boy weighs 50 kilograms and is running 3 meters per second. What is his kinetic energy? Okay, you do it the same way. Okay, one half times... Um, 50, it's 25, 3 times 25, square it up, you have 225 joules, okay? Again, this, this is the math portion of this. Um, I'm not saying it's over 6th grade head because a lot of you are very capable of doing it, but it's, it's a little bit higher math than, than some of you are used to. Uh, so we're not going to worry about putting this on a test or anything, but we, we will talk about it in class, just kind of help you figure it out. All right, interesting facts. If you double the mass of an object, you double the kinetic energy. Now, the last class, I told them, I said, hey, this is where people quit paying attention. And some of the times your answers to your homework questions comes out of this. And sure enough, hmm, out one of these in here is on one of your homework questions. And I have eight people. 
I can't find this anywhere. Hello? Okay. Try, try reading the whole thing. If you double the speed of an object, the kinetic energy increases by four times. So if you double the speed, you've increased the energy four times. Remember, we talked about that yesterday. The quadruples. Okay. All right, the word kinetic comes from the Greek word kinos, which means motion. Kinetic energy can be passed from one object to another in a form of a collision. Okay, big old SUV hits a small car. The SUV might come to a stop, but the small car moves because it has transferred that kinetic energy to the small car. So now that small car moves. Okay, uh, the term kinetic energy was first coined by mathematician and physics Lord Heaven. Yeah. Everybody, everybody goes nuts over that one. Okay. And I have no idea why. All right. Again, I will give you the, uh, give you the answers to that. Uh, if you follow the formula, you can probably work it out, but I'm going to give you the answers just to make sure you do get those uh, correct on your homework. Okay. All right. See you later.